Hi, I'm Annette, and I'd like to welcome you to Phil's Sewing Machines. Today we're going to cover bobbin work using designs that are built into the machine. If you haven't watched part one yet on how to set up the machine, you may want to review that one as well. So let's get started. I have some fun things to show you. I tried a variety of ribbons, string, and specialty bobbin thread. It was a lot of fun. I tried the red suede string. It was a little too heavy to use for this type of work. There's other applications that would work better. That skip spot right there was because I sped the machine up a little too quick and it missed it on the zigzag. I also tried jute string. I thought that would be kind of a neat look, the natural look to it. But the jute string was really kind of on the coarse side. It wasn't easy to work with. And also, if you notice, it's very fuzzy. And I think after a while, it would make a buildup in your machine. This is one eighth inch silk ribbon, and that was kind of fun to work with. The straight stitch looks a little bit different. I don't know how it will do in embroidery. We'll find out together, but I thought the zigzag looked really nice. In just a little bit, I'll show you how to load that into a bobbin. This is a solid ribbon with center stitching. It makes for a beautiful ribbon, but it was a little bit on the stiff side for this type of work. As you notice, the zigzag points, they're not very pointed. They're more flat like the straight ones. This is an eighth inch velvet ribbon. It's beautiful, but I was surprised at how thick it was. It's very noticeable when you go to sew it, as this was the full length that you see stitched right here was the full length that I could stitch with one bobbin. That means if you're going to do a project, you'd want to wind many bobbins before you start, but that also means you're going to have to stop frequently to change your bobbin. Not a lot of fun. This is called Baker's Twine, and that was really kind of fun to work with, especially the red, white, and blue. The black and white, though, it was about twice as thick as what the red, white, and blue is. And I'll see if I can hold this so you can see it a little better. Here we go. And you'll see it's it's much thicker. The red, white, and blue, though, it actually did a nice job. The points and everything on the zigzag, it turned out very well. The black and white twine, it looks a little bit jumbled. And the reason being is I had to bypass the bobbin tension. It was too thick to go through there, so I went straight up through the needle plate. The top row of the red, white, and blue, it also is a little bit jumbled. I didn't intend to miss the bob intention, but I did on that one, and that's the look that you would get. This is called Specialty Bobbin Thread by Inspira. It is designed specifically to do bobbin work. It's got a pretty sparkle and shimmer to it, and it comes in gorgeous colors. I love the turquoise blue, the gold, silver, black, and red as well. Now I'll show you how to wind the silk ribbon onto a bobbin. I found it easier just to trim from one side, just taper it down to an end. It was easier to do that than try to make a point from both sides. It doesn't matter if it's even because you're just going to get it through the hole of the bobbin, so it doesn't need to be centered. Then take the ribbon and insert it from the inside of the bobbin to the outside through the hole. And get a little bit of a grip on it when you can get it pulled through there. And then you want to hold on to that end as you wind. Otherwise, it will pull until you get it wrapped a few times around. It will want to pull that tail back into the bobbin. So kind of keep a little bit of a grip on it just to get it started there. Continue to wind and just try to keep the ribbon as flat as you can. And you kind of alternate going back and forth so you get an even wind going around. You do want to add a little tension as you're, as you're winding it onto the bobbin. Just keep it not overly tight, but just enough to give it just a little bit of tension. That's all. When you have enough wraps on the bobbin that it holds securely, then you can trim that tail off and it makes it much easier to wind. Wind the bobbin until it's about 80% full. You want a little bit of a gap there 
this type of ribbon or thread that we're using, it may expand a little bit when you let loose of it. So you don't want it to rub inside the bobbin case. And after you have wound the bobbin, you want to make sure that that ribbon stays on the bobbin. So it's a great idea to put it into a bobbin saver. This one's called the Bobbin Saver 2. It's square, and what's nice about that, if you have a drawer, it fits in there well. It goes right into the corners. And if you prefer to have your bobbins handy and on your sewing table, this works great. It's a bobbin saver. You can add it to your coffee mug. You can put it right on top. It snaps on there, takes a little wiggle, but it'll go right on there. Or you can put it on the bottom or both, and then you have double the bobbin capacity. And the mug makes a handy tool holder, so you can put your scissors or whatnot into your favorite mug. And if you're one who travels, the Dritz Bobbin Box is a great solution. The bobbins fit right into the well, very snug, they stay in position, so when you're on the go, this is the one to use. Let's get our fabric hoop so we can start having some fun embroidering. When we hoop the fabric, we have to remember to put our good fabric side facing down with our stabilizer on top. The inner ring of the hoop has a little triangle up at the top. So does the outer one. So you want to match those ends when you hoop. We'll place the outer hoop underneath the fabric, get it in position, and take the inner ring and press into place. Then fully seat it so that, it's, that it makes a good tight fit. And then what we'll do is secure the screw. I'm using the multi-purpose tool like I used in the earlier video. This works great. Now let's get our bobbin wound. Place an empty bobbin on the bobbin spindle. Then put the thread onto the second spool pin. And I'm using a spool cap to hold this one in place, but lightly. I don't have it pushed totally against the spool because I do want it to spin. This thread has a little more spring to it, so it really resists it wanting to stay in the tension. So again, we'll do that little trick I did in the earlier video to keep it there. If you're working with threads like this that have more of a spring feel to them, I want to give you a little tip about winding the bobbin. What you do is you give it a number of wraps around the bobbin as you normally do, pull it through the slot to hold the thread, but don't cut it. What I did, I cut it with a scissors and left just a short tail. You don't want to leave a long tail because then that would wrap around the bobbin winding spindle. The reason I recommend doing it in that fashion is that earlier I had tried to do it with the built-in cutter on the bobbin, which generally always works, but with this thread it just was not productive. Each time it would jump loose like that. Like I did in the previous video, part one of Bobbin Works, I add a little bit of tension by holding that thread between two of my fingers. What that does, it gives it just enough tension to keep that thread from jumping out of that tension disc of the bobbin winder. And of course, wind very slow. With this thread being thicker, these bobbins fill up very quickly. So you want to wind several of them if you're going to be doing a project. Remove the bobbin and then just trim the thread with your scissors. And also, you want to be sure to trim that tail so it doesn't hang up in your bobbin case later. I have already prepared the bobbins with yellow embroidery floss, as well as the red, white, and blue baker's twine. So let's install the silk ribbon, and so we can see what that's going to look like. I'm really curious. With the silk ribbon, you install it just like the other bobbins, and again, we'll bring it through the track. The ribbon is actually very soft and very pliable. 
This is a tip worth noting. I like to pull up the bobbin thread before I attach the hoop. That way the bobbin is ready to come up when we begin the pull up through the hoop. I also like to leave the bobbin cover off at this point. It gives a ribbon just a little bit more room to flow through there. The tool that I'm using to help assist in getting the ribbon through the needle plate is called That Purple Thang. And it has a curved end. That's the end I'm using right now. And it works great. And the thing you want to be careful of, you want to make sure you pull the right end of that ribbon because you don't want to unwind the bobbin that you took so long to hand wind earlier. How we can tell that the ribbon is through the tension is that it's coming across the top of the bobbin. That's a good sign. That's good. We'll put the bobbin cover on and now we can get the hoop installed next. We'll just slide the embroidery hoop under the foot. You want to be careful you don't catch on the fabric and then slide it into the embroidery arm and lower the lever. The embroidery hoop for this machine and for many others is actually what they call keyed. And what that means, the machine will recognize as to what size hoop you have on your machine. On the embroidery machine, we have two options, embroidery or embroidery edit. I'm just going to show you an embroidery edit. The bobbin work stitches show up, and you can tell that they're bobbin work stitches because they have the B by them. You can see the designs there and you can select the design in Embroidery Edit. However, you will not be able to stitch them in that mode and it will give you that message. So we'll just close out and we'll go into Embroidery Mode. The bobbin work stitches are very specific and that's why the machine will only let you select them in Embroidery Mode. In Embroidery Mode, you only have two options to make changes and that's either to rotate them or to flip them. Those are the only two options available. I've selected the design already, brought it onto screen, and now I've moved into embroidery mode. It will, however, let you move the design within the hoop so you can place it where you like. This is a noteworthy tip. If you take a look at the design, you'll notice that the green cross is right in the center of the design. We need to pull up that bobbin thread through our fabric. If we were to do it in this position, it would pull it up right in the middle of the design. Then it would jump to the very first stitch and start stitching. So what we need to do is advance it by just one stitch. To advance the machine one stitch, you just need to select the forward back key and then press the plus one key. And this will move the crosshair to the very first stitch of the design. And then press close. And again, I'm going to place a little post-it note over my thread cutter button. This will remind me not to activate that button during bobbin work. The designs have been specifically made that they will not cut at the end. However, if you press that button, the scissors will activate. And with this thick thread, it would cause a jam. I hold the upper thread in my left hand. I lower my foot and then I press the needle up down button two times and then raise the foot. I hold the upper thread in my left hand and I give it a bit of a tug and you can see the fabric and the stabilizer actually lifting up a little bit. And then I take the large embroidery needle and I poke it right where that thread comes through. And make the hole just big enough that the ribbon can slip through. And I'm using the purple thing. And on that end, it has like a little groove in that square. And it grips that thread real well to pull that. Now I'm pulling both threads with my hand. And you can see the fabric, it's lifting. It's not going to come through. So I'm going to take the embroidery needle and give it another little poke there and just enlarge it a little bit more. That was just enough. And when I poke that needle through, I'm keeping it kind of flat. You do not want to poke your needle plate because that would cause a scratch in your plate. 
But when you're lifting that up like that, it feels like you're almost popping a balloon. That's the way it feels. One last thing we need to do before we begin stitching, and that's to raise our upper tension. By default, most embroidery designs are defaulted to 4.0. With bobbin work, you need to have it pull a little snugger, so I'm going to raise it to 8.0. In the book, it recommends between 6 to 8, but that will vary with each machine, so you kind of have to find out what works best with yours. I got a little carried away when I was pulling up the bobbin ribbon earlier, so you don't really don't need to pull up that much. 6 to 7 inches would be plenty. Press start and begin stitching, and you'll notice the machine runs slow. That's because by default, the speed is set to 100 stitches per minute for bobbin work. The maximum speed is 350. I prefer to go slower, so I left it at 100 stitches per minute. After you stitch a, a short distance, then you can stop the machine and you can tie a knot to secure the end. That way you can trim the tail off and get that out of the way before it completes the design. After it's finished embroidering, then a drop of fray lock will be added to the knot, and that will secure that knot. And trim the tail with the scissors. Press start and resume stitching. The machine will allow you to save the designs to the internal memory. However, you cannot export these designs via USB or through your computer. The reason being these designs are, have been digitized specifically to do bobbin work and they do not want you to alter them in any way. And with that being said, that also means that you have other designs built into your machine or you might have a collection of designs. These Unless they're specifically designated to be bobbin work designs, you should not try to use the thicker threads in the bobbin work case with those. It's hard to sit and just watch this machine stitch so slow when we're used to seeing it stitch other designs at 1,050 stitches per minute. So this is less than a tenth of the speed that it normally stitches at. But it's worth the wait. Just take your time. Yes, the design is complete. So now we can raise the needle press the needle up button, raise the foot, and we can remove the hoop. I'm going to pull the thread just a little bit here. We'll trim the upper thread, and then we can remove the hoop. And again, we want to leave a long tail of ribbon that we can bring to the back side later. Oh, wow. That looks great. It looks like hand stitching. Now we can use a large embroidery needle and thread it through the needle. There we go. And then push the, the ribbon to the back side of the fabric. Then it can be knotted and later we'll add some fray lock to it to finish it off. There it is completed. Wow. It looks nice. It looks like hand work. I've re-threaded the machine. I put the blue metallic, the Inspira bobbin work thread in the bobbin, and I have my blue thread on top. I also installed the hoop. Also, I have moved the design to the center of the frame so it can be easily rotated. I want to stitch four of these designs into one hooping, so I want to rotate the design. So I rotated it to the right, and now I want to move the design to the lower portion of my embroidery frame. I have also moved the design a little to the right, and now I want to check where it would stitch. To see where we're going to stitch the design, we touch the trial key. 
But what's interesting is take note of where the green crosshair is in the design. It's directly in the center. But I want to see where the top of the design is going to stitch. So I'm going to touch the center top position. And as soon as I did, the green crosshair moved right to that spot. That's the first stitch of the design. Using the arrow keys, position the design where you would like to have it stitch. Confirm that the green crosshair is at the beginning of the design and go ahead and repeat the process as we did earlier in pulling up the thread. The process is the same, so we'll just quick forward here and I'll show you the end result. And wow, I like that too. It's always so much fun to see what's on the other side after you stitch these. And then we'll trim the thread. Oh, and by the way, this is a Karen K. Buckley scissors also. This is a six inch scissor and it has a serrated edge. It gives you that nice clean cut. But we'll thread it through the large embroidery needle and then I'll push it to the back side of the fabric again. For the next test sew, I'm going to try the Robeson Anton embroidery floss. We are re-threaded and ready to go again. It's kind of like watching paint dry when, when you're waiting for it to finish stitching. But when you see the end results, it's like, wow, that is so neat. I really, really like it. For the last one, the red, white, and blue, I thought I would use a mono poly thread. It's virtually invisible as I had a very difficult time seeing it, but it stitched beautifully. It's a polyester monofilament. The baker's twine was just a little bit thicker than the other threads I was using, so it took a little bit more coaxing to get it up through the needle plate. But the purple thing, that thing works great. It hooks that monofilament or any thread with that square end. It has a small lip under there and it catches it nice. I could tell the thread was seated into the tension of the bobbin case. That's what's given it a little more resistant. If it was any thicker, I would have to bypass the, the tension. But it, this still was thin enough that it could go through the tension and work fine. It just was a little bit more of a challenge to pull it up. I didn't want to break the thread, so the upper thread, the monopoly, but a little bit more coaxing. And actually, this pair of tweezers, we sell these, they come in a pack of three. And they work great. The thread was a little bit folded over there, that's normal. And then I was able to pull it up easily. And I can tell too that the thread is in the tension well because it's, again, it's coming across the top of that bobbin. Now we can install the bobbin cover and get started with the embroidery. We'll attach the frame. On the original recording, my hands blocked the view of what I was doing and I wanted to show you a second method of how to pull the thread up. So part of it, you won't see the stitching on it that was there before and that is why. The owner's book suggests using a leather awl to, pull, to poke the hole. I didn't have one of those. I did have an ice pick that would probably work, or I had a clock tool, and that's what I decided to use. So I unthreaded the needle, and then I lowered the needle into the fabric. I used a friction marking pen and I can mark the spot right where the needle had dropped. This will be the spot where I would need to poke the hole. Then I could raise the needle and remove the hoop so I could poke the hole with the, I used the clock tool. But you could use an ice pick or leather awl. After the hole is poked, then we return the hoop to the machine and slide it back in place. And then there's one final step. Since we put the needle down and the needle up, it actually advanced by one stitch. So you want to go back and, and make the stitch go back one stitch. 
and then press close. Then you do a needle up, needle down, and then you should be able to pull the thread through. I'm using that purple thing again, and both ends work. First I use the square end, and then I'm using the curve end to pull that thread up and through the hole. Here it comes. There we go. We got it. And now we'll hold the upper thread and the lower thread, and we can press start and begin to stitch the design. So the last thing to do is to trim the thread and draw it to the back side so we can make the knot. And here we have it, mission complete, our final sample. I hope you enjoyed the Bob and Work video. If you need any of the products that I used in the video, they are available on our website. Just click the link in the description. Until next time, happy sewing.